Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, this is Ben. You're listening to the Otaku Generation podcast, where you're very confused. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. This weekend, we chased down a perp for a full one minute until we caught him. Never get between us and our salmon mayo onigiri. We are still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where... Oh, hey, look, Albert's here. Show number 681, June 27th, 2018, with this week's topic, Burn Up. And now, anime with one crazy dude. Number one, Trigun. Number two, Helsing. Number three, Inuyasha. Number four, Pokemon. And number five, Sailor Moon! And now, a person who just realized he's on a podcast, Alan Chase. Thank you, Matt. That was really loud. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do that in the edit. Hi, hello, everyone. How's it going? Um, I'm Alan. I'm Matt. Catch up, Bryce. Albert. Yeah, and Albert's here. Oh, my God. Um, he, uh, <laughs> Yay! Paul became an Albert today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like that sixth Power Ranger you summon when you need extra power. The green one? <laughs> yeah. Summon the Plaid Ranger. What's Freesh? What's Frank? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Uh, so, what did I do this weekend? It was uh, awfully quiet, which was good. I watched a couple of movies. Stargate Origins. Apparently, there was a web series I didn't know anything about. You can now buy it on Amazon. And I, I sort of upgraded my Fire TV so they gave me a $10 credit. Otherwise, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But uh, I watched Thor Ragnarok. It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah, the third Thor movie. Yeah. yeah. So I I watched it thinking it was the second movie, not knowing it was not. But I really enjoyed it. It was actually mm-hmm. pretty good. Um, it was really a fun movie given there's, like, a lot of comedy in, in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the thing about the those Marvel movies, even if you watch, like, the third Thor movie, you don't really necessarily need to have watched the previous ones to know what's going on. Right. I don't feel like if you were to have only watched, let's say, the Thor movies back to back, you would have gotten certain um, contacts with certain characters. I don't think you would have understood if you were watch Thor Ragnarok mm-hmm. right after you have watched, you know, um, Thor and Thor Dark World. I don't think you would have gotten the context into the relationship between Thor and the Incredible Hulk. Um, you really need to have seen the the Captain America and Iron Man movies mm-hmm. to to go into an Avengers movie and understand exactly what's happening in them. I mean, you right. need to have at least seen Some the most recent yeah. Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man movies yeah. to so I mean to I really saw, go into an Avengers I, movie. I saw I own the Captain America movie, the the new one. So I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the, these are non issues here, and it didn't uh, didn't put me off at all. I might have seen the second Thor movie, and it wasn't very meaningful I, to me. I saw the second Thor movie, and honestly, I could not tell you who the main villain in it was. It was right. Christopher Eccleston, man. <laughs> it, was the, it was the doctor. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. not a doctor anymore. I know. Um, yeah, so, but it was just like some generic bad guy you've never heard of before or since. And Yeah. And it's like Thor beats him up. So, I mean, one day I'll watch it. But, um, mm-hmm. no, I'm glad that I, I saw this movie. It's available on Netflix to watch. That's how I saw it. So, um, yeah, it's good. Totally enjoyable on its own. I mean, even the opening scene, he's like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I thought we were really connecting there for a second. So, my favorite part of, of that movie, and a lot of people seem to forget about it, is the part where he's in that hallway and he's about to be introduced to the the, the head guy. What's what's his name? The, the Grand Master. The Grand Master. When he's, about to, he's going down that. In like, Doctrine film that says, yeah. hi, welcome to the end of the universe. Yeah, and basically it's like playing the world of imagination from Willy Wonka in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> and he's just sort of like strapped into a chair like going, uh, is this really happening? This yeah, is, exactly. This is incredibly stupid. But yeah, like definitely probably the, the best of the three. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. Very colorful movie too. Oh uh, yeah. Not boring at all. Very well paced. 
Whereas, like, I, I feel like, not, not you know, completely shunned the, the first two Thor movies. They were pretty good in their own right. But this one was, like, the first one I, I just, like, flat out, like, I had fun watching it from start yeah. to finish. I didn't really feel it dragged in any of the spots. Yeah. It's, it's just more of all paced. It's, it is a very fun movie in and out of it. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, did you, uh, did you notice that Ant-Man and the Wasp is coming up, like, next week? Mm-hmm. Yep, that's coming up. Uh, advanced word on it is that it's pretty good. Um, awesome. The Wasp is awesome. Looking forward to seeing that. I like the first one. So, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I felt like that the first one was really unique in terms of kind of like his distinctive powers mm-hmm. and, and kind of like played around with some of the, the interesting things you could do, you know, from, you know, changing from large to small size. Some like the combat designs in terms of like, you know, turning things big and, you know, using that to throw against your enemies and you know, mm-hmm. getting small and using that to your advantage. So I thought they did a lot of really cool, unique stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you remember his friend Luis, the guy who's, like, telling stories about how everything happens? Like, yeah, I know this guy, and he said this and that. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I just love that because, I mean, he looks like, you know, your, your typical, like, low-life character. But then he's like, so we were at this wine tasting, you know, at this art gallery opening. And it's like, what? What's this guy <laughs> talking about? And I like he's, like, he's just, like, ad-libbing as you see, like, the actors actually, like, like speaking. Even yeah. though, like, they're not actually speaking. <laughs> he's just doing their voices <laughs> as he's telling the story. <laughs> Seriously, they 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 totally should just like have him, like do recaps for like other Marvel movies mm-hmm. as like a web feature or something. It's like so then like Captain America is like oh no man his brother got killed and his mother got killed by the Winter Soldier but he doesn't know that see, and then this other guy he comes out and he thinks they're trying to make like Hydra weapons and that would be perfect. How do you guys feel about the whole? Yeah, you, you know, like, it's a comic book movie, and you know certain characters are coming back because, mm-hmm. hey, they announced, you know, a couple of sequels down the pipeline. Yeah. Do you feel it takes away of the impact and the illusion of, like, certain characters, uh, you know? Sort of, but rough? also comic books have got a whole thing where, where her- sufficiently heroic characters always seem to get a second chance. Right. I mean, you know, hapless mooks in the street... They just get blown up, and that's the end of them. But, but when you're not just heroic, but super heroic, it's it's an even roll of the dice. How long death will be an obstacle to you? Even in original comic books, like main characters die and get revived. Yeah, pretty that was, frequently. That was one of the things that somebody said back when a couple of years ago they were doing the death of Superman. Right. And they were sort of like, oh, my God, I can't believe that, like, people are wetting themselves over the fact that Superman's going to die. And they're like, why is that? And it's like, well, he's died, like, 13 or 14 times previously, and no one made a big deal out of it those times, so. Well, this is the first time it was, like, a, like a, a huge mainstream publicity. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so, it, you know, it all depends on the perception of how you place it. So they made a really big marking spiel when they uh, announced this comic. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, it made, like, headline news everywhere. Like, I, I remember seeing, like, <laughs> you know, archival footage of this stuff. And it was ridiculous how people bought into it when there were some people who were like, you know what, I bet you later on they're going to revive him. Like, there's no way they're going to kill off of a money Of course, yeah, we're, we're going to throw away Superman forever. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. Like, a- anybody with a business brain knows that, mm-hmm. like, certain characters like that are too much of a cash cow to just kill off and just completely not yeah. continue. I, I could see them deciding that, like, a particular villain is played out and, and like, quote, killing them as opposed to, like, sending them off to Arkham Asylum mm-hmm. to just, like, cool their heels until someone comes up with a better storyline for them. But but not, like, a popular hero, not while their books are still selling. Mm-hmm. That's sort of the, the good thing and bad thing about Infinity War is, like, a lot of people bit the dust in Infinity War. Doctor Strange said there was one way they could beat Thanos, and we know we have sequels coming up for a lot of these guys, so yeah, so yeah. hope springs eternal. Hopefully that didn't spoil anybody. If they Anyone who thinks the they're actually going to kill <laughs> off the characters as a retard, as simple as that. Disney well, is not going to get rid of all of these characters that make them tons of money it's, 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 it's especially <laughs> since they already announced that there were you know sequels for certain characters that are coming up in the near future down the pipeline you know what i mean yeah. mm-hmm. so when you th- again if people think about this carefully that's kind of like the whole comic book machine like 
comic book characters are always dying and mm-hmm. revived. So yeah. if you think about it, it's still kind of a faithful idea, a yeah. faithful formula. It, does it kill the impact of certain uh, choices and things that happen in these movies and from people taking it seriously? Maybe, but again, look at the source material you're working with. So, Matt, hmm. did you do anything this weekend? Did I mention that I saw Incredibles 2 last weekend? Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. okay, so Incredible 2's... Incredibles 2, awesome. <laughs> um, just beware, if you have epilepsy, there are flashy bits in this movie. Yeah. Do not go into it unawares, um, because it is, like, seriously flashy at several points. Mm-hmm. Uh, has, has this sign that people brought up, like, reporting that people are having um, seizures due to this movie? Well, I, I, when the flashy bits happened, I was like, oh, the Pokemon yeah. effect. They they'd probably better... Hope there are no epileptic people in the audience oh, yeah. with this. I guess I was just thinking if there actually was reports. Because that Pokemon episode, there were reports of that happening. The yeah. mainstream yeah. media news actually started reporting on it. So okay. what's that right. big a deal? Right. It became that. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, like, real. morons, they showed the actual flashy bit that triggered <laughs> epileptic seizures. And it's like, when this clip, flash, 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 was shown, children had epileptic seizures. And you just gave 30,000 more children epileptic seizures because they were watching the news over dinner time. Did they actually do that? Because yes. I was just listening. I barely well, actually watched the news. I just have to have background noise while well, I do other stuff. Well, to that effect, like how long does it take for a child to you know experience a seizure if they were to see something like that? Like, I a couple have seconds? no idea. It, I, it's not a lot. I am not a doctor. Okay. <laughs> um, but but I, it's like while on TV. Yes. I'm just saying like, if they were to parts. show that footage, they wouldn't have shown it for that long because if, if there was a risk that they might actually give kids seizures by airing a piece of that footage like you know they were morons right but uh i i know i saw like some photographs online someplace where where there was like an actual like sign posted at, at, in the front of a theater saying incredibles 2 contains like strobing and flashing lights so if you are susceptible to to injury from strobing or flashing lights you know <laughs> please be aware oh yeah okay. incredibles 2 coming to a rave near you yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, but aside from that, excellent movie, wonderful movie. Definitely yeah. encourage you to go out and see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if I had to rank, uh, if I had to like compare it to the first one, I would say it's probably like I don't want to get. You want to say it's better, but you don't want to say it's better. It's not better. Oh, I, I don't think it's better. I think it's a little like I wouldn't put it this way. If, I would say if I had to rank it from, from like a scale of like let's say like a half, I would say it's probably like a half a point less mm. than the first Incredibles. Which is not much. I'd I'd say it's just as good as the first Incredibles. Yeah, I mean, and I think that all depends also on like mm-hmm. like the script. Like I thought they had a really good script. I loved the characters that they introduced. I thought I thought Violet was great. She had more to do in this movie. I thought Elastigirl was awesome. I, I love that Jack Jack had some stuff to do as well. Yeah, yeah, Jack Jack was actually significant as opposed to just being like you know baby with random powers. Yeah, I mean, if if anything, I, th- I think the only thing I had. a my, again, this is very minor. Yeah. Um, was probably the villain. Um, I, I okay. thought the villain was a little bit underwhelming compared to the, like, the villain in the first movie, um, okay. which is probably why I would rank it a little bit lower than the first movie. Okay, I, I can see your, your argument. So. But I think the other parts of it make up for it. Yeah, because I mean, like, I, I kind of saw the twist coming like a mile away. Uh huh. Um, I guess mostly because I've seen th- that type of setting before. Ah. Uh. And, like, I know it's supposed to kind of. Th- take place in this like 60s you know Mm -hmm. like early mid 60s type of era yeah so the whole like uh, depiction i guess of like you know the whole like women empowerment thing kind of makes sense since that took kind of started in the 60s yeah um even though there wasn't like like raving in the 60s but like i I felt like that that's where it kind of like originated it started to like build up from there Uh, um but yeah like i i I, kind of like that stuff i like the the whole twist be you know um, the contrast more like the first one focused a lot of Mr. Incredible being, you know, you know, the guy out there. You yeah, know, it was all about Mr. Incredible sort of like chafing on the sidelines. And now the ironic thing is that like they're they're doing this whole thing of let's bring back the supers right. and we want our spokesperson to be Elastigirl. And he's like, what, huh? <laughs> right. No, and that's good because like you know, the, the first one kind of focused on Mr. Incredible. This mm-hmm. one kind of focused more on Elastigirl, yeah. which was really good. I like that idea. You know, it kind of get make it each movie very distinctive and mem- more memorable. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Are you, are you hoping that, that they do like an Incredibles 3 someday? I mean, I would love to, but I mean, the thing is like, we've been like 14 years for the <laughs> sequel. So I you know, like the fact that it took them this long to actually say like, you know what? L- all right, let's do another one. I mean, 
I don't know. I'd be willing to to like wait for another couple of years to see a movie that focused on like Dash and Violet and maybe Jack Jack. Honestly, if they do a third Incredibles movie uh, again, obviously they would have to bring Brad Bird back again, who wrote. And yeah, these, it, there's these no two. Incredibles without Brad Bird. Yeah, like I just don't know. Just as there is no Edna Mode without Brad Bird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like there are certain developments. Um, that they've done with certain characters in the second one that they would have to follow up with in mm-hmm. the third Incredibles. Like, definitely the whole thing with Jack Jack's powers in the second movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel like they would have to... F- that whole payoff with him developing what his powers are in terms of, like, having multiple powers, mm-hmm. I feel like that has to kind of bear some fruit if they were to do a third one. Yeah. So. Okay, well, enough about Incredibles 2. Um, that's about everything for me this week. Um, okay. How about you, Ketchup? You got anything to say? Yeah, okay. well, you save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Ketchup. Justify yourself. That's a good episode of um, uh, Red Dwarf, mm-hmm. where there's a character called the Inquisitor who goes around and races people from history who can't actually justify their lives. <laughs> So I have no clue, like, where you can look it up, if you can find I'm sure it. there's got to be a Red Dwarf Wikipedia out there somewhere. No, I mean, actually watch it, though. Oh, okay. Like, the first two seasons were great, and then Red Dwarf kind of steadily went downhill from there. I think that one, though, was from, like, the third or fourth season, so it wasn't oh, quite yeah. crap yet. It, it changed more from The Last Man in Space to Wacky Wild Adventures and Comedy. Yeah, the thing completely turned into crap when they brought back to life almost all the cats. Like, they found nanobots, and they found the dust yeah. particles of the... And I've, like, the making that... crew. And yeah, it's, it's like... Why would you do that? Why? Do, what makes them so special? Because they ran out of ideals, or something uh, ideas. like that. I, yeah. I can't pronounce it. We've gone through this before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, chicken noodle soup. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I talked about Chaplin, but I was watching it off the sub-channel movies, which... Cut off literally a third of the movie. You have a movie that's two and a half hours long. They gave it a two hour with commercial runtime on wow. it broadcast. So I got the DVD. I didn't like purchase the DVD. I rented it or mm-hmm. checked it out. But anyway, so I watched the proper version of it. And adding that hour back into the movie really does change it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and for the positive, it's I'll personally recommend Chaplin. We went over this a couple of weeks ago, yeah. so there's no need for me to harp on about too much. But I also watched In Harm's Way. Remember I mentioned how the movie subchannel had also In Harm's Way, which is also nearly three hours long. But they gave it a four hour time slot, so they actually showed the whole movie. Showed the whole thing, yeah. With plenty of commercials and even like a little bit of extra crap at the end. If there's a movie that you could have easily taken an hour plus out of, it's In Harm's Way. Okay, so In Harm's Way is a movie with John Wayne and crap, oh, Kurt Douglas. Kurt Douglas. It's, uh, I think it's 1965. It takes place during World War II, but it's based off of a book. It's All the events in this movie are fictional, so I guess Pearl Harbor, Harbor was also fictional. But uh, yeah, uh, it was you know all leading into the moon landings, as far as I understand it. I mean, when they have like all the characters of the events in this movie are fictional, but it's mm-hmm. historic fiction. Shouldn't they like rephrase that a little bit? Anyway, in harm's way, one that suffers a lot from tail and stuff showing, like Jeff, like high-ranking naval officer type people yeah, like sitting around tables discussing their plans, and then when they actually do show stuff. Like, the thing's just chock full of World War II military porn, essentially just stock footage of troops running to aircraft and then mm-hmm. ships and boats disembarking, and then embarking, and then mm-hmm. stuff like that. Guns so, firing, things blowing up in the distance. Or when they had, like, tried to do actual special effects, they're just absolute crap, like the model yeah. craft that um, Kurt Douglas is in. When it blows up, it's just absolutely... They might as well just have, like, bought, like, a cheap plastic mall, put a firecracker on it, and then they explode. <laughs> so it's not a particularly good movie, in my opinion, and all sorts of other issues. But the point being, it's just so messed up, the fact that Chaplin, which really should have shown the whole damn thing, mm-hmm. they cut out a third plus of it in harm's way. To show the whole damn thing, why it easily could have been cut yeah. down without any suffering of the plot or story. You know, this sort of reminds me of uh, of when they were doing what was it, Robotech the movie. They the instructions that the the editors got were 
cut out all that boring talking crap, which was the plot. So the movie was an incomprehensible mush of Mecca shooting at each other or with the, no context or meaning. Yeah, and it was taken from um, Make a Zone 23. So, mm. like, you can't really turn Make a Zone 23 into something that fits into the pre-established Robotech in a good way. Yeah. And to, like, try force... The, like, I actually have watched Robotech the movie. Like, someone actually uploaded it on YouTube a while ago. Like, yeah. I have no clue if it's still up there, but... And, like, the ending bits, or, I mean, I guess since you're talking about it, you've seen it as well. How no, they... I, I never saw it. I, I read an interview with somebody, I think it was actually Carl Masek, who was, who was, it was sort of the case of, you do it, Masek, or we will hire somebody else who has even less familiarity with the source material to do the job. And he was like, well, okay, I guess I have to do it then. So It's his duty. <laughs> yeah. It's but my duty to maim this with care and understanding. The ending of it, in order to make it fit, they actually did like hire like whoever cheaply they could find to animate it, mm-hmm. animate the ending. But it's like so such crap that doesn't really match the actual yeah. make its own twenty three footage. Ouch. I mean, like, like they have the mecha in it, but it's also off model. It's just such Painful. amazing crap. Yeah, it's just seven Zark seven to the rescue. <laughs> Those weren't actually um, the movies I was going to talk about. The movie I am going to talk about for this week is Scarface. Mm-hmm. Which one? Uh, the first one, I guess. I didn't know there were more than one. The 1930s one or the Al Pacino one? Oh, the Al Pacino one. So okay. um, the nineteen A three one, according to IMDb. Okay. I don't get why it gets so much praise or why people think so well of it. It's it's it's, it's the first movie where where you just had over the top decadence and violence. Or one, I was kind of underwhelmed by the violence too. The whole, um, do you like to, or do you used to say that you haven't really said it in a while, but damn your inevitable, but... Your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Yeah, that. <laughs> the movie's essentially that ad nauseum. Yeah. It's like, my God, the person I hired who is a disloyal, murderous madman turned out to be a disloyal, murderous <laughs> madman. And then the second half is essentially... This disloyal, murderous madman who hired me turned out to be a disloyal, murderous madman. <laughs> I mean, like, all the people who kill, got killed, essentially, their deaths were kind of justified, not because they were bad people, but because they sort of seem what was happening or going to happen to them a mile away. It's like, mm-hmm. they probably sort of killed Scarface when, at the first signs that he was hanging on their girl and talking mm-hmm. about absurping you instead of waiting and hiring a the two most incompetent goons you could find to try assassinate him <laughs> and two when so it's just like yeah. i mean it's not a bad movie i'm saying but i uh, don't get why it's also considered such a good movie either i, I think just because it was for its time transgressive mm. i mean you you look at the movies that that win the academy award and there's a couple of them that are eternal classics, but you you largely look back at them and you go, well, I guess people of you know 1962 thought that was a really cool movie, or 1944 thought that was a really good movie, and you just sort of look at them now and go, really, this one won, and you know you even look at who they were up against for the award, and you go like, oh, well, I've I've at least heard of one of those other nominees, but this one I haven't even heard of anymore. It just seems like it's one of those movies, like, even today, people still, like, regard as one of the... Mm. And also at this one time, I was like, well, I guess they still had time on their train rentals, so they decided to just do this. So, it's just... Again, oh, and the music. The music was so damn heavy-handed. And what's with that rock ballad in the middle of it? The, like, the push it to the limits or whatever. Yeah. It's like, okay, so... But I mean, the song's okay. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> but it feels like so out of place, and it. it's like just suddenly in the middle of the movie they have this montage. Of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, but I just like the song on its own. I think it's a, a, fun, <laughs> a fun song <laughs> that can be used for good comedic effect in other sources. <laughs> That's the thing is that like if if Scarface is meant to be a dark or black comedy, then I can understand it. But no, uh, my, they mean it seriously. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like, I'm aware that they mean it seriously, but the only way I could really like accept this movie is if it's to be taken as a dark slash black comedy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I just regard it as stupid. It's a yeah. or B. Gotcha. But I probably the rest of you like have 
opposite opinion. So feel free to say, no, they're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Al Pacino is the greatest American actor of this or any other generation. Or also, like, he's cast as a Cuban, but, like, I think Al Pacino, I think Italian, so that was also Yeah, I, I of... believe he is Italian. As yeah. Al, Al Pacino? Yeah. Al Pacino's Italian. Yeah, so it's just, like, he didn't really... He's certainly quite... not Samoan. Well, why, did you say he's he was in a Cuban role or something? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, playing a Cuban. The, the guy in Scarface is, is supposed to be, like, a Cuban drug Oh, lord. you're talking about Scarface, yeah. 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 So that... Also, I think slightly just mm. felt mismatched. I mean, it it was. I don't want to say it, it was more like a stereo, like, like a stereotypical performance he was kind of portraying. Um, but I could see why people would think it's a stereotypical performance. And I'm speaking <laughs> this because I'm half Cuban, so. Um, but yeah, I, I I could see that. I could see why that why mm-hmm. people would say like eh, but. To to um, to that point though, mm-hmm. um, Andy Garcia, who is a Cuban actor, he played an Italian in The Godfather Part Three. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah. But The Godfather Part Three, no one speaks of that one. Oh no, no yeah, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's a very nice guy. Well, you know, this is Hollywood. The last thing we want is someone accurately portraying their own ethnicity because that would yeah. be I oh, don't yeah. know. How many? How many different Too types? Real. <laughs> how many types of uh, Asian ethnicities did Pat Moore to play? <laughs> uh, all of them, I yeah. think. Yeah, more or less. Also, yeah. Peter Sellers. But at yeah. least you actually had, yeah, oh, uh, Asian playing Asian characters versus, mm-hmm. as you just mentioned, Peter Sellers playing. Yes, the the what was it? The the insidious plot of Doctor Fu Manchu with Doctor Fu Manchu, and the Chief Inspector being played both by Peter Sellers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's enough for me. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if this is a combo or not. Bryce, Albert, you guys want somewhere? Um, I'll let Bryce go to more details about um, what the reason why I'm actually in Present. town. Present. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this week was a convention called Too Many Games. And we had a good time. Yay. Albert. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more than that. Come on. It's a small, like, um, I would call it a small con. Yeah, it's at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center. In Oaks, it's been going. I've been going for three years now. I don't know how long it's actually been running. I don't want to say too much longer than that. Uh, it's known for, I guess, it's it's a really good place if you're looking for you want to like find retro games and to either I guess you could sell yours there. But usually, it's, it, there's a lot of dealers that come around the mm-hmm. area, so it's a very good like place to like sort of search for the games you're looking for. And like I know I had like a friend in a retro game club. He ran. He like bring a list there, and you do this too, Albert. <laughs> and you know <laughs> try to find the games you're looking for and mm-hmm. for a good price and a good condition. Uh, I mainly go though more for the um, the art. Uh, they do they unlike most conventions because it's probably so small. They actually mix in the artists with the dealers. You usually oh, really? see like a dealer's room and an artist. These are Alice Dally separate, but they're both huge and usually other cons. This is more like mixed together, which I think is fine. Um, I think is it good? You know, it might get people's eyes who don't really think they care about art, like fan art, a look at that while they're shopping for their games and maybe vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so I picked up. I brought a picture of it. So this, is, this is my art acquisition that I really am happy with. So this is like those perla beads. Oh, okay. But it's like a 3D, like, um, it's, they're, oh, glued yeah, in, yeah. they're glued in layers to look like the Super Mario RPG uh, characters, which I think is a really great look for them because they are kind of pseudo 3D in that game, yeah. know, pre-rendered. Uh, so it's Mello and Gino, and I really like that game. So they're the original characters in there. Yeah, you should probably mention, like, so th- they're... They're in their like old like eight bit or sixteen bit form too. Yeah, it's like mm. you know those pearl beads. You know what I'm talking about where you melt them together yeah. and the then, fusion beads. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't. It's not just a, it's not two D like it's layered on top of each other to give a sort of a three D effect. Uh, there's but I guess I didn't find as much art as I was hoping to uh, because a lot of dealers from last year were here again. Um, so it's a lot of the same as last year. It felt like yeah, yeah, a little bit. So actually, I saw those last year. And I was like, well, I want to buy these other things. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to budget for that. And I was thinking, if they're here this year, I'm going to buy them. And they were. And I said, fine, I'll get them. To be fair, though, the dealers that did come back again that had the same stuff last year did have one or two new things this yeah. year. Uh, the video game Shadow Box guy uh, was there as well. Um, but I've already purchased like three pieces from him <laughs> <laughs> and given three to other guest gifts. So it's like six purchases. And I just I have too much wall space. Not enough wall space for all this stuff anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it's cool. They have. Um, what else did we see? There was a, oh they have like an indie game section uh, as well as board games, um, so you can sort of go up and sort of try out demos uh, for like the indie game showcase. Uh, what was the name of the car game we saw that I thought was pretty good? Um, in, the car game or the, no, the the horror game? Oh, the horror game. Uh, it was called Emure. Right, right. So yeah. it's sort of like a two D. Um, I think it's spelled like I M U R E. That's right. I have a card. 
There you go. Okay. So you can actually, I, brought, I grabbed a card. Uh, Albert plays a whole half hour demo. I play through about 15 minutes and then sign up for their newsletter because then they'll send you an hour long demo to try out later on for free. So that's cool though. It's like a 2D sort of horror um, adventure mm -hmm. game, I would say, um, with a little bit of action elements. You're sort of grabbing, you know, you're going to like doors to find doorknobs and work on a door to like continue on all while avoiding monsters that are sort of lurking across the hallways and you hide and one sees you and they'll sort of look around and look for you and then go off. But you also have like an element of like, there's this like, sh like shard you get that can stun them as well as mm -hmm. help you seek out secret messages in the environment. Yeah. It looked cool, very layered. It had a cool 2D look. Um, did you get a gun in that? I feel like, uh, later no, on? Okay. I got a, well, I think it was like a, like a stake or something that basically you could like stab the, the right, enemies right, with. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was cool. It was pretty dark. I wouldn't necessarily give it to someone who's jump scare easy or unsettled by maybe some graphic imagery. Uh, I don't think cool. it's... I mean, it's going to be necessarily as effective at being, like, truly scary. Like, shock scary I, if it's going to be the 2D art style like this in I third guess, like, person. It's not a shock scary, but there is, like, that moment. Because when you get when you hide in places, you go into a first-person view and you, like, see the monster, like, looking around for you. And sort of, like, go... Rah, rah, rah. Just as you're saying that, actually, I'm right now watching a yeah. trailer and they showed that. <laughs> yeah. so. um, you know, I, the effect might lose its impact, as you might expect by the end of the game. But I don't know how long the game's going to be, so I really can't say. Did you play with headphones? I did. Okay. Yeah, headphones, it was, that sounds I felt real good. Like I could hear the monster like sort of leaving the vicinity as I was hiding in my ear. Um, so yeah, it's imyourgame.com. Uh, this a i m m u r e game.com. If you want to look at it, um, I'll probably play the full demo and talk about it later. Um, any other any games you liked? I saw. I'm trying to think of the ones I saw. Oh, there was Coffee Crisis. <laughs> it's like a beat 'em up. Yeah, I didn't play that one. You did. Uh, so Coffee Crisis was this uh, interesting beat 'em up that the guy was telling me about is. Basically, just to break it down, it's a beat 'em up, um, old classic, you know, style 2D beat 'em up with uh, these two guys who worked at a coffee shop, um, and basically the planet is being taken over by aliens. And yeah. isn't that actually been turned into an NES game? Like, you can actually buy a repro of it. Uh, it a Genesis he, game. He turned, oh, Genesis. It, yeah, yeah. he turned it into a 16-bit Genesis game, and then the other one, he, it's, it's, I mean, it's currently out now, but he was there demoing it. It was a 16-bit. Uh, Genesis copy that he was selling with the cartridge and everything, and then there was um, the uh, the full like uh, re like high res version, which I think is on Steam. From what he said, okay. I, I believe he said it was on Steam. And yeah, I'll, I'll, at first he had me demoing the 16 bit Genesis version because I guess there was yeah because there was two other people still playing the uh, other version. Mm. And I was playing, and I was like, okay, this looks kind of cool. And then when I was looking at the other people playing the uh, the better version, I'm like, oh, wait, I want to play that one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like the, I mean, obviously I had to pick out of the two. The the Steam version was I thought was better. Um, but, yeah, uh, it was a good game. Pretty fun uh, concept. And uh, well, it's like I mean, ups tend to get a little tired sometimes when you play them in long spurts. It seems like it had a little more depth than just punching blah 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 <laughs> uh, I, I mean i didn't get far enough into it just to like get into more detail okay. with it but like it definitely had like the same tropes of like you know like busting like little uh at, you know yeah. environmental things to get like a you turkey know, a turkey <laughs> yeah, yeah a turkey an apple um you know a, a stick to beat uh, enemies with or something so uh but overall it seemed pretty cool um the art design seems kind of cool really cool um I'm saying the real, word really cool a lot, but <laughs> overall, it was uh, it, it was a really fun game, uh, definitely neat. And uh, how much is it on Steam right now? Uh, Four fifty. Four fifty. Six six uh, six dollars regularly. Oh yeah, Steam sales. Target, that's I guess that's that's definitely worth picking up. So yeah, I would recommend it. Um, what's the other game? I'm trying to think. I get caught my eye. That was the only two games. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's the only two that really caught my eye. I got a chance to play. There were some better. There were some cool platforming games. I forget the name of them. Uh, but it was always like crowded. <laughs> it can never get mm. seen down, so I had a good look to it. What was that neon one that we played? Oh, Neon Wasteland. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you were watching Looking me play. That, it. I was like, it looked a little rough. Like, you were just... watching me play that. Um, it seemed like really cool. Um, a cool look to it. I thought. Yeah. You know, very like neon hell, like futuristic cyberpunk, mm -hmm. but like way over the top. Uh, but on a way like where it's like, hey, VHS is in your face and <laughs> stuff like that. Although you do get like a VHS to give a rewind, but. Yeah, uh, they're really it looked like a gems. platformer. I don't know. It didn't grab me with the mechanics watching Albert play, so I didn't play it myself. But you look like you were struggling with some of the things. Yeah, I guess because I, I wasn't too used to some of the game play mechanics, and I, I don't know. It seemed like one of those games. Like if I, you know, kind of picked up the learning curve a little bit more, maybe for like another ten, fifteen minutes, I probably would have gotten used to it. Um, but you know, overall, it seemed like really neat. Has a really good look to it. Although I'm not sure if I would probably. 
Um, I mean, it's, it's probably early in development. I don't yeah, know, that's, so. that's true. Yeah. You know. So fair enough. But yeah, it seems like it has a lot of potential. With the right soundtrack, I think it'll be really cool. Like I'm right now watching a trailer for it. So it yeah, yeah I think it evokes what it's trying to go for. I just don't. Albert played this for me. Like it looked like he was struggling with the controls, and I'm in a platform where I kind of need the controls for me to enjoy it. Has to be pretty responsive yeah. and like feel good for me to want to play a 2D platformer these days. There's so many of them that are you know good. It's hard to stand out. Yeah. And what comes to my mind looking at? I mean, it's definitely like a much simpler thing but also i forgot to mention because i briefly talked about e3 was the mm -hmm. um was it cyberpunk 2077 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that sort of thing yeah i maybe taking a little more almost like a more of a parody level in some weird way like it, i didn't see all of the cyberpunk trailer but it looked they're going for a more serious take on yeah. it this feels like i don't think they're trying to like this is gonna be a serious you know take a cyberpunk it's, i don't know cyber cyberpunk 2077 seems like it's pretty based on reality <laughs> considering what the premise is with like you know corporations you know going at war against each other like i think <laughs> that might actually happen at some point all these companies yeah. buying each other out and uh, but there's some tabletop indie games there as well i brought one uh, my girlfriend like this she did a demo with the creator one of the creators and it's called maho shoujo fight like a girl and this is like a uh, 10 to 20 minute uh 15 to 20 minute like sort of two-player card game um that you basically assemble a team of magical girls and you get like transformation cards as well you know look at the cards you can see there's four decks in there that's all there is so it's not like you have to buy booster packs and stuff everyone has like the fair shake and it looked like what was happening is that you sort of lay down it's a little like magic or maybe the pokemon card game in the sense that you're going to put down your magical girls and then there's like transformation cards so you can turn them into you know, to boost their stats mm -hmm. and you get a pet that can also boost their stats so it kind of gets all the things you would want from a magical girl show and sort of i don't know she's like she had a fun time with it and it looked too difficult because uh, they just say like 15 20 minutes so it's not a huge commitment uh, it's two players so it's cool it was only 20 bucks it all comes in one package the whole everything you need it's just those are the cards they made uh, so, is uh, it like two player max or two, two player, player minimum? It's oh. two player max. Two player max, mad minimum. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a one on one game. Does it play with die? Because I know. Yeah, yeah, you do need dice or some type of counter or the paper assigned to like keep track of like life or something on the on the girls. Uh, so I, I also you know you just I, when I do that in Magic, I just put dice down. You know, three counters on it. You know, three on the thing. They took three damage or whatever. Uh, but it's cool. Yeah. Uh, I think it has a good presentation. It was kickstarted. Um, so I'm gonna try to play that with her more. Um, she wants to try to get into like magic, but I remember when you start with something a little less intense <laughs> than magic. <laughs> yeah. Because even I, who play a lot of magic, there's still things in magic I don't fully grasp sometimes. Um, also, like I said, it's nice you have to buy booster packs. It's just you get everything you want, 20 bucks, you know, minus the dice, I guess, or counters. If there's one thing I learned about getting invested in card games, there's always going to be more. And there was like a, speaking of dice, there was a dealer there, I forget the name of them, where they, they were like a. Um, it felt like they were like jewel, like a jewelry store booth, and they were like jewelers, but they were like wearing these really nice, like you know, matching uniforms. But it was for dice, for di for, <laughs> for um, Dungeons and Dragons, or type of all playing games. It was a very interesting presentation because they would like pull it out of the case on the velvet, and people would like look at it. Oh, <laughs> like you know, I bought the dice I bought were at some other store, plastic ones. But I guess if you want some really nice dice, you could mm. probably go. I don't know what they're charging, but I can't. <laughs> if they had a whole big booth just for dice, they probably charging a lot at a convention. Yeah. But, you know, I don't like tabletop games that much, so... Hmm. If I did, maybe I would like a really nice set of dice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for events, well, you saw Cosplay Wrestling again. I missed it because I was doing the show floor with <laughs> Annalise, my girlfriend. So. Yeah, how'd you like it? Uh, it was good. <laughs> they had some... Like, like last year, they had a lot of interesting characters paired up against each other. Let's see, they had Ryu versus Link. Link won. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, they had they had a, like a battle free for all with Mr. Game and Watch, Sheik, <laughs> Solid Snake, and someone else I forgot. Um, but yeah, it, that was kind of entertaining. And so then, essentially, like Smash Brothers Brawl Ultimate turned to life <laughs> wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It, it's basically cosplay pro wrestling. It's not just game um, mm. game characters. They also sometimes do uh, characters from you know like. Yeah. Or anime or other types of shows. Yeah, like Spider Man was there, right? Or Deadpool? Who was yeah. there? Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, Spider Man was there as well. Well, at this point, they're also in games. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, it was really fun. They uh, they had, they did some interesting matches with uh, the championship match. 
and apparently there was like a heel turn with uh, with Mario that was involved where he helped his brother um, retain the championship and apparently that was a big shock to everyone <laughs> and people were actually eating it up <laughs> and I was just like standing there looking at him but uh, no it was all in good fun though like it, it, they, they they interact with the crowd which I think is very key very important in these types of events because you, you want to keep the crowd engaged in, in when, when you're doing these performances and I, I feel like it, it helps with um, you know keeping people like interested with what they're trying to sell so. Actually, we should also say these are trained wrestlers they're not just you know cosplaying yahoos they're just you know, <laughs> right. they're dangerously yes. slamming themselves around the ring like they clearly know how to take a hit or, or take a fall and you know so, I, would, I would say so the quality of the wrestling is also good yeah I would say that the, the, their experience level is anywhere from amateur to intermediate mm-hmm. so like they're they're, they're they're trained, but you could tell like they're still learning yeah. to you know they refine they their. They probably won't hurt themselves like really badly. <laughs> right, they're still refining their craft, but you know they're new. Like I think they've only been around for a couple of years now. So like I feel like with every year their shows get better and better, and I could tell actually because compared to when I saw them perform last year, I could see some of them have kind of you know been doing a good job you know selling the performances. So and I think yeah. that's really key to every wrestling match. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't not mention the second year in a row, Crush 40 was back. <laughs> <laughs> or the guy from Crush 40 was there. Right. And which, it, once again, it was just him on the stage singing, but then he like brought up fans of like air instrument. It was really, <laughs> so the Crush, he said the, the Crush 20 somethings, what did they name the, yeah. it was the a, band? But that guy's super nice though. And those, those songs are really silly. I, I affectionately called them Sonic Butt Rock. And I <laughs> like them half ironically, half unironically. <laughs> you know, Sonic is. All hail Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> Live and learn. He didn't forget this year. He didn't forget Open Your Heart. The original, in my opinion, is John Lee song. Yeah. I, f- I kind of feel like he returned this year mostly just to make sure he performed that song. <laughs> That's why I feel in my heart of hearts. Because <laughs> he missed that song last year, and I really wanted him to sing that. And luckily, when I got to the convention, I when he started the concert, uh, he started with that song. And I had gotten there, like, literally, I think just as he was about halfway through the song mm-hmm. like i literally got there i was texting bryce and bryce was like all right i got the badge just meet me in front and i was like running 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 and, and he saw me like pass by and he was like here, here, here. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> a, on, like, like a relay race of like okay take the take the <laughs> ticket go get your badge we can't miss this song <laughs> so but that guy i mean we met him last year in the art autograph- for the autograph stuff and he had to run after right the concert he had to be in poland he said <laughs> yeah jump on a plane like all right sure big sonic butt rock scene in poland <laughs> but so, he seems like a really nice guy like right you know totally cool really thankful for the fans you know you can see a guy like that maybe a little egotistical or something i don't know but he's really nice everything i've seen him i don't know what he is personally but his interaction with the fans is really nice that's kind of an important part i think yeah. um and I guess, you know, Charles Martinet was there, the voice of Mario and Luigi and Warrior and Waluigi. Uh, I did, he was doing autograph, he did an autograph session on Friday that was a very long line to get through, but I don't think he was charging during that autograph session. And then during the regular day on Saturday, he would like periodically go to his booth and charge for autographs there. And I was thinking about getting a copy of Mario Galaxy signed, because um, I need a Mario game where Mario talks. <laughs> and, but uh, he was charging 40 bucks for an autograph, and that just seemed really steep. <laughs> mm-hmm. But since he was the only guy there who was charging for autographs, which I get, he's the voice of Mario. He's a big voice actor for video game fans, but I don't know. Uh, 40 bucks seems steep, <laughs> just to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you could pay 50 and get like a poster. They'll give you a poster, I'll sign it there. But <laughs> I don't know. That seems like a lot. Um, so 15 plus 40. No, no. I mean, sorry, it'd be, it'd be 50 total and oh. then $10 for the poster and 40 so that's kind of the deal. So oh, you okay. sign your poster and you pay 50 for it and you get the poster. Uh, I think, but if you wanted to just get something signed you brought, he'd have to pony up. Mm. Uh, the voice of Bowser was there too. He wasn't charging. <laughs> yeah, say what you will. Bowser's going to be a better guy than Mario. Think about it. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. He's, he's the voice of Mario. He can do what he wants. Just, I'm not going to pay it. <laughs> what was he charging for if you wanted to do like like a recording or, I think or something? 50, I think it was 50 for that too. Yeah. yeah. So, so get him to start say, hello, whoever you are. <laughs> It's a me. <laughs> and you're Charles <laughs> I don't know. I could probably do. I could probably. Hey, you, do. you gave me fifty bucks. I, I have a way in line to get him to record that for you. <laughs> you're like, no G. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I could probably do like a voice from Mario, <laughs> and, and then we won't cross you anything. <laughs> yeah, you're giving away for free. Exactly. Steal yeah. the century. Okay, well, so that's pretty much it. All right, uh, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, since I mentioned that, I didn't really have much to say about E3, but since they're both here, and probably might have more. Oh, uh, I thought Nintendo was a real bummer. <laughs> As somebody who really likes Smash Brothers, like that 
half hour of the whole direct to be dedicated to like Smash Bros. patch patch notes. It's a little <laughs> crazy. I like the idea of bringing everybody back, but I don't know. Mm. Like I wanted more for a second year from Switch. I think they, in some way, they really like, you know, started the show with the showstopper the first year with the Zelda and a Mario game and Splatoon on, as a Splatoon as a kicker. You know, that's a really great lineup for a year from Mario uh, for Nintendo first party, but. It's kind of like they blew their load in the first year, and now it's like... <laughs> I can see why they would do that, because they needed Switch to be a success. Like, the Wii U was kind of such a commercial flop that they kind of had to come out guns blazing. And That's So I understand true. why they had to really? do this. Really? The Wii was a flop? Wii U. Wii oh. after the Wii Yeah, you've been here oh. Wii U. That might be the, it's, a lot of people haven't. That's the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's like the... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a dumb console. And, and the, the irony is a lot of people that were buying the original Wii after the fact was because they wanted, like, a cheap, you know... Yeah player for Netflix and stuff like that. Like, people who aren't actually gaming. Well, the Switch, I feel like, if you lost Switch, you're probably a gamer, because there's not, like... Right. I don't think there's a Netflix app on it yet, or Crunchyroll, or anything like that. No, so. um, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, it's meant to play games, not meant to stream <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. Though, I mean, you know, probably could. I thought Sony's press conference was an interesting choice in format. <laughs> it was a little weird. <laughs> uh, like, they had, like, this stop. After Last of Us Part Two. they had, like, a stop and went outside to talk about little things and then went back in for the big other big trailers. I thought that the uh, Ghost of Shishimi, is that what that one is? Shishima? I think that's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that game I thought looked really nice. Like I, I'm a fan of Sucker Punch's previous games in Infamous, so I'm very interested to see that game and how it comes to be developed. It looks very cool. Albert, what was your opinion about Jump Force? <laughs> Jump Force. So, <laughs> Bryce... Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> so, Bryce thought it was like a like kind of like a New York type of setting or something like that? I am... I am 95% confident this game is set in our world. <laughs> <laughs> they like just. But I will double check now. <laughs> maybe, yeah. So I thought it was okay. I mean, okay, it's another jump crossover for like different types of you know jump characters. You know, they had like Naruto, uh, One Piece characters, and and Dragon Ball. And I was like, okay, uh, I saw some gameplay, and I'm like, this seems just like a much like high res like a more high res version of J Stars, which also came out over here, surprisingly. Um but I think they're just focusing on a certain number of franchises for this one. I'm not sure if they're focusing on like a whole bunch of them like they did with J Stars. Right. So um but I mean so far it looks kinda nice. I mean, don't know anything more than that. Yeah. Okay. So I mean it's I thought the Dragon Ball game by that fighting game from last year, this year, was really good. Fire so. Sea. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So I, I don't know if I want to play like a more brawly type fighter. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm going to give it a try. I just, I think that kind of works better because it kind of retains. Or I shouldn't even say kind of. It does a remarkable job of retaining the anime type look. True, yeah. That's true. And that's why I really don't personally care much for the uh, J Stars thing. That because it looks like they're trying to do kind of realistic, but still do like anime style, but like with realistic lighting, and it just doesn't. They're work trying to, with me. They're trying to do like something like a little bit like grander. Like you could explore this big space, and you could have a grand battle in this huge space. So like you could do crazy moves and you know crazy techniques. Oh, yeah. or I just mean like the look of the textures, or not necessarily textures, but like the uh, mo um, the light effects, whatever the term right now is. That's mm -hmm. escaping me, but cell shaded. Or yeah. it's not cell shaded. That's, I mean, that's, it's that's not black what, out there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that should look more cartoony I would feel right. personally yeah. prefer. I like to present evidence as if it be Luffy is standing on top of a flagpole that has the American flag on it so as far as I'm concerned but, you there's know, no US in One Piece <laughs> world. <laughs> I mean but, but again that could just be a, a you know part of a trailer. Uh, yeah. There's some game they're making them, They're making them look realistic in a way probably because they're trying to set this in a real world setting so potentially and I think it's a There's actually scenario. gameplay footage. Yeah, so. and, yeah battling for reason of Times and, Square. Anyway. <laughs> Again, I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> I'm always going to give a jump game a try, at least see what it's like. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Um, then I guess we should probably run a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, this is Fade of AnimeMusicVideos.org, and you're listening to Otaku Generation. And we are back from break with this week's topic, which is... Burn up. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. You with the exclamation points. And not to be confused with any of the other burn ups because there's like a whole bunch of burn ups, yeah, but this is the yeah. first one. Right. There's burn up. This is 91. There's burn up exclamation w, points where it's burn exciting up back Excess, <laughs> burn up scramble. scramble. Yeah, well, this is the 1991, I guess, right? Yeah, the this, first, is, the this is the original burn up OAV. Uh, it's 1991 OAV produced 50 minutes by AIC, I believe. Mm, okay. Um, um, Let's see. If you haven't heard of this, not a big surprise. Uh, 
The most notable thing about this OAV is that somehow or another it was considered good enough to have like not one but two but three spin-offs, sequels, and reboots um, named after it. Um, but that's kind of my point, point. The characters aren't the same from what you've told me or what Wamsy told me. Someone said something. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking up the like the description for the other ones, and apparently I don't think it's the same characters from what I saw. Because like, yeah. one of the main characters' his name is Rio or something like that. Yeah, but the, the basic premise of this is that you have three hot chicks who work for the city police department. I'm assuming it's Tokyo in the future... But I don't think they really ever say what city it is. In the year 20XX. <laughs> yeah. Um, so could be anywhere from like, you know, 2001 to 2099. We don't know. Um, but the basic idea is that they're hot-blooded police women who are chafing against the restrictions of, of police bureaucracy to, to go out there and kick ass and right wrongs and fire guns and all sorts of fun stuff. Making it sound like there's more story than there actually is. Yeah. Um, the, the basic plot of this is that you have these girls and they discover that there is a kidnapping ring going on in the city where young, cute girls are, are being kidnapped and then taken away and brainwashed and then sold into sex slavery to, like, greasy, hideous elderly men. Well, I don't think God is sure. He wasn't that hideous. I'm not saying he's a good guy. <laughs> he's buying a slave, but he wasn't hideous. He's just an old guy. Anyway, yeah. it sounds way darker than you. <laughs> it sounds really yeah. dark. Yeah. It's and, kind of messed up when you really think about it. Like, this is a really heinous crime, this ring. This, this yeah, and if it, if it was rated R, it might have been like a really you know gritty, horrible crime um, fighting, quite, yeah. fighting show. But as it is, it's sort of like, oh, yeah, they're bad guys and they're... Kidnapping innocent girls and taking them away and wahaha doing something nefarious with them, and that's that's about the extent of it. I mean, there's more of a focus on violence than sex with this anime, such as it is. Yeah, and it's not really violence; it's more like firing guns. No, no, they they show stuff. a couple of people get pretty violently like killed. Like I mean, one yeah. guy in the car. He should be like shot right to the head. Yeah. Like, in the opening scene, I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess this was the 90s in anime. Well, you gotta have a little violence. Well, which is funny though because like when the females were getting shot, they didn't show them getting gratuitously you know, shot well, yeah, compared to the men. Not. Heroes only get you know, shoulder wounds. Plus they're wearing their protective yeah. body suits. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. really that revealing either. That's no, why yeah. I also mean about the Violence versus the sex. Mm. I mean, there is like the shower scene. So that's a, yes. This is a nineties was... OAV. So there's an obligatory shower scene in the van. <laughs> but I was so confused about that shower scene. Shower scene. <laughs> shower scene that happened. And I was like, how that took place? Because she's in the shower. And we go, okay, this, you know, this bodacious babe is taking a shower, and like, you're showing it. And she gets out of the shower and like walk, like comes to the next room. I think it's a room at first, and then like talks to this guy, and they're about to like, I guess, get it on. <laughs> and then like the other characters like appear at the window. And they're like, wow. And all of a sudden, like, they open the door in a van. Like, I, the whole time. Like, I just don't understand. Like, it didn't make any sense. Does this van have a bathroom in the back? I, I with a know. shower in it? It was a uh, so Fan service. It, yeah, I mean, the fan service. Like, it threw me off so much, I didn't even think about the fan service. It was yeah. like, what just occurred. I, I suppose, like, the, the best analogy we came up for this was that it's kind of like an anime version of Lethal Weapon. But not as hardcore. Um, or as good. Or as funny. <laughs> Oh come on! They they tried to. Um... Well, you know they they tr they have like three heroines, and they each have sort of their own distinguishing personality. Like one's blonde, <laughs> the other has dark hair, and one's pink. And hair. One has pink hair. See, I think don't really quite get the lethal weapon outside of the fact that it's like a police drama -y type show because the whole thing with Lethal Weapon I thought was the dynamic between the two partners. Well, there was a bit of a dynamic between the two partners. Yeah, but yeah, it, I don't think it, a little bit. That's, that's sort of <laughs> a little that, bit. It, it, it's there, but, you know. It's kind of like stretching it right, to say right. that. Yeah, but it's it's uh, but it's but very shallow characterization, and I think that's yeah. that's the, the analogy I draw between this and Lethal Weapon because as much fun as Lethal Weapon was, it was not a deep movie. It was like no. Riggs is super competent and depressed and Murtaugh is retiring in two days and he doesn't need this crap. That's yeah. still a hell of a lot deeper than this ever got. <laughs> it is. Oh, no. Uh, the yellow-haired one is uh, aggressive and the dark-haired one likes her technology 
and the pink haired one is cute. Yeah, they so you just you that. just you just hit all those the <laughs> templates I was looking for for the last show. The technology thing though, they forced that. Yeah, really. I, there was yeah. no like. It's, she never seemed like she was into technology yeah. to that scene where something got shot of hers and she really freaked out about it. Yeah, <laughs> her, her tricorder gets shot and then she like freaks out and goes crazy with, with like her super duper machine gun. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like the alien sonar thing where they can magically see where people are on a map. I mean, it's a pretty useful device, but <laughs> <laughs> so I guess but, I'd be bummed uh, out if someone shot it. Yeah, but it, it follows like the standard um, like, you know, cop movie trope where a crime is going down and it's just like nefarious and all kinds of evil but but the brass are all stuck up on procedure and evidence and getting warrants and things There's, whereas the cop on the beat knows where it's going down man so the girls go undercover um, I guess against regulation they were not supposed yeah. to do this and they try to like find the kidnappers and the pink girl girl because I guess she's kind of the doofus one mm-hmm. you know gets kidnapped and you know it's got become one of these sex slaves and so she's in like this prison under the mansion of this bad guy mccoy but like back at the like police headquarters there's like no sense of urgency like from almost anybody like even the partners yeah even the partners like the the partners finally start talking about we gotta save yuka but like like, (laughs) like, like, five days later yeah i would like think if a police officer was like life was in danger and kidnapped and missing like there would be a lot more scrambling in the department to figure out where the cop is (laughs) i mean at, at this point in the movie we've got multiple girls being kidnapped and vanished Finishing, yeah. we're pretty sure something horrible is being done with them. That's suspicion and probable cause or something. And then they have an undercover policewoman vanish in, like, a den of criminals. And, oh, and then, by the way, their one star witness against the criminals shows up dead in his cell with numerous poison darts puncturing his body. Yeah. And it's just like... No, we person. don't have enough evidence to go and, and investigate the bad guys. And it's like, how many dead people do you need before it's considered yeah. evidence? Yeah. I'm no lawyer or legal expert, <laughs> but I would think it would be a little... You need a lot less to get a search warrant at the very least, because I just feel like you got two cops that are witnesses of the crime. You think their testimony would mean yeah, something. It's like, Plus they have the evidence of the, of the needles. I'm thinking too much about this, though. Like, yeah, and, it's like, <laughs> every, and they perfect. kind of fix that very easily with just one little brief scene, like maybe one, two minutes where they show like the evil organization pulling the heads of the police on the payroll. You know? Yeah, like, something like that, yeah. I could, that could have been good done. Or, like, I don't know. They didn't do anything like yeah. that, though, so no. they can't justify it. They're, they're yeah, just, like, incompetent or something. Like, what about the needles? Can we use that as evidence? Like, I'll go take some time in the lab. It's like, what? You, you got, like, technology. Get it done. <laughs> this is, this is the near missing. future. <laughs> it's the worst police department. <laughs> but they have their own hospital, and not, like, a small hospital. Oh, like, yeah, the police hospital. <laughs> like, the freaking chief of police was not giving a damn shit about what, what happened like he like he was just like there eating his his stuff and this guy's just like, like literally like you know harassing him telling him like come on chief we can't let this do it. these guys are still out there it's like does the sworn testimony of two law officers like not count for anything in the future i mean geez i guess not, I guess not as he's chewing a strawberry it's like oh i know we've, we've got a crime committed in front of not one but two policemen but that's not enough to go on uh, but anyway, the but logic anyway. and the logic and the flow of, the, of what's happening aside, like I don't think this is a very entertaining movie anyway or OVA anyway because I feel like once I got to the action, shooting guns everywhere, and like you know, busting in on the on the mansion, it was kind of well, it's kind of lame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they could have. They could have had like more like guns blazing, like you know, get people getting shot, explosion, explosion. Where they kind of start with that, but then it peters out, and then it kind of just yeah. turns into a slow. <laughs> yeah, the best part is just that initial like car chase thing. Like that was pretty yeah. kick ass, but yeah. after that, it just went yeah, downhill. Kind of the music was going, like yeah, 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 and it's like uh, and it slowed down. Like there was, there was a budget on this OVA. Like yeah. there was a like you could tell like that there was a good amount of. Uh, Money Work. spent. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, you could tell, like mm-hmm. especially with that one car chase scene with them like going up the ramp and then like the, the, it's kind of like the camera angle shot from above the car to like you know like right into the car or into the side. It was really cool. Yeah, so so there was like you know effort and stuff put into this, but it seems like they kind of blew all their money in like the first ten minutes. And yeah, then, the production work was there though, but and yeah. and sort of like just sort of like we're. I guess going through the motions for the rest of it. Yeah. It's more like like we've got this great idea, it'll be like really cool, and then like after like they did about the first ten minutes of the show, they're kind of lost interest in it. I would like to think that during the shower scene, they they animated the shower scene. 
the entire production team walked off. <laughs> brought a whole new team. And said, okay, start somewhere in the middle. And then that's why we have such a weird transition to the van. And that's why it just turns into a different kind of thing. That actually uh, makes sense. That's a bad thing. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, but and, yeah. uh, one, on, one anticlimactic ending. Well, like the guy, like, well, oh, yeah. You got me. Smile. <laughs> what do you mean? And, yeah, and, like the bad guy is like, He's not even like curse you and your your meddling kids. You got me. It's sort of like, oh, you think you've captured me, smirk. Yeah, we we've captured you. He's just happy. He can but there's a helicopter you're right captured, behind no. him with like a thing that I can just fall back on, and then the helicopter has to leave. And I've been free, so that confused me because I thought like <laughs> he did escape, and they just I missed something or something. It's like they didn't notice that our our chief bad guy escaped or something or. Well, plus he also had like that one brainwashed girl who was like his his accomplice or lieutenant yeah. or something, and you know she shows up and I was like, oh, she's going to, like, do something, sacrifice herself, yeah, you know, set you know, set off a grenade or something and kill herself gruesomely so that the bad guy can escape scot free, haha, and laugh at the police. But it's just like, no, she's just going to sort of stand there, I guess. They're just like like looking at each other and then just smiled and I'm like, it's like okay. <laughs> like, almost like like they were content about what was going to happen. I can finally rest. No it's more. Like, thank the God the OAV is over. I'm being arrested. No more slave trade. <laughs> we're finally done. <laughs> uh, and there was say a stinger at the end. Yeah. There's like they had so many the, like where they thought they had a good joke and then they paused yeah. for a few seconds like eh, eh. <laughs> like you guys it's gonna like, laugh now? Yeah, it's like, like no, good no, joke, huh? Huh? It's like no, no, it's not. It's really not. I did like some of the the footage that they show of like the production work behind it, like the mm-hmm. sketching designs and stuff like that. That yeah, I thought was kind of okay. Cool. Yeah, that was a cute thing to do during the credits. Yeah, yeah, it's like here here's the animation roughs and the keys and here's like you know the overlay with the mouth motions. That's right. kind of a cute thing. You don't really see that too often. Yeah. Um, so. I'd be curious to, to hear the dub version of this. Hmm. Well, it was dubbed. It was dubbed yeah. by, uh, what is it, ADV, I think? Yep. Yeah, probably. Yeah, back in 94. And uh, well, according to this, it was uh, uh, initially subtitled by Animago in 1992. Yeah. yeah. There hmm. you go. Uh-huh. And well, they picked up that license quickly. <laughs> Well, it was probably pretty cheap. Well, considering this is the same company that had AD Police, I think, you know, Burnup was right in their wheelhouse. <laughs> sure. Also, I mean... To be fair, it, it does share a lot of, like, art style with, like, Bubblegum Crisis and AD Police. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, the other thing about this is, you know, way back when, they were just picking up whatever they could get. They didn't yeah. know what was going to be hot or not. I mean, typically, fan service stuff was what sold. So, yeah, but this isn't even that fan service. Yes, the thing like they could have been with the shower scene aside. It could have been a lot more. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But I think if you're looking for like an old school like bodacious babe shooting guns, you could do a lot better um, series than this. I mean, I'm sure yeah, you think about, dirty pair. Yeah, dirty pair for sure. <laughs> if you don't, if you're okay with like intergalactic one, but there must be others that would work here. Um, let's see, gunsmith cats. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like stuff like that. Riding so. bean. <laughs> you could do. You just do better. <laughs> I saw Writing Bean. That was pretty good. Yeah, Writing Bean was good. Oh, did you hear that there there's like a Kickstarter project to like do a new Writing Bean project? Well, Finally. I think they already did that already. Yeah, like, is it that, is it finished by yeah, now? Yeah, oh yeah, it's actually been finished. They released the Blu-ray set and everything. Oh, wow. Um yeah, it, it, like they did like a whole like uh spiel with like, you know, adding a lot of special features I think with um the uh the director mm-hmm. you know, doing like some audio commentary with them or something like that, cool. which I thought was pretty cool. Um so, yeah. I thought the music in this was alright though. Burn up. Like, I, I think there's this song during the club scene. It's like really bad. <laughs> all, like all English is really good. That club was weird, dude. Like weird seriously, club. it had like different layers, different levels, and like each level had like weird like themes to it. Yeah. Like, Seeing the monsters go to basement <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah. Like, like there's one point where they're investigating the like criminals disco, looking for the the kidnapped mind washed girls and. One of them just stumbles into like a cosplay bar where everyone is dressed up as like a classic movie monster. See that dog th- monster thing? I don't think that was cosplay. I think there was something else going on in the basement. Mm. Yeah, no. like some type of mutation or something. Or yeah. some sort of like experiments or some sort of like yeah. weird secret lab Maybe stuff. Like a plot that, thread they wanted to go with. Yeah. Maybe later on in the movie, they made a full movie out of this. But yeah, and they like, yeah. they're probably and, like, eh, that's not going. And then there's like a, another level that sort of looks like a really nice, well lit corridor from like Aliens <laughs> or 2001 or something. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but that's it. <laughs> I think, yeah. like, 
like at first it was just a throwaway joke that I made, but honestly, after watching the whole thing, I do <laughs> think multiple times the staff working on this got bored with this anime because you also had that like extended trailer for a fake video game. Oh, that's right. Yeah, at, at one point you you open up on this thing which is like a Dungeons and Dragons fantasy RPG adventure. More like Dragon Quest, I think. Yeah, yeah. like Dragon Quest ish, and. You're just sort of watching this, and it's like, did did we just like you know move to a new anime, and then it pulls out, and it's like yeah. a, a a video game advertisement on a big like video screen in in Times Square or something. Was it a video game? I thought it was like a like a like a sequel to a movie or something. Maybe uh, so yeah. Quest of Dragon it, it, yeah. 31 or something. Yeah, I remember it was 31. So that's a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Best part of this OVA was that one shot of the poster for Rambo 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's like cool. this came out like what ninety yeah. one, and like I guess they they thought it was going to be going on for like many uh, many years. Well, I mean, they straight up said Rambo, like it wasn't like Rumbo, <laughs> like with like a you know off yeah. brand Rambo. They <laughs> they misspelled it correct on by accident. Yeah. Like it said Rambo, and then the Roman numeral twelve. I'm like, yeah. yeah okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> probably around this time, this was like when Rambo two and three had already come out, and it was like, yeah, yeah we're just going to be making Rambo movies forever. I think. Uh, yeah. 12 seems logical. It's sure. the future. Yeah. It's similar to the Jaws gag from Back to the Future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jaws 19? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Voodoo shark. <laughs> the future has turned out so freaking disappointing. <laughs> Sharknado. <laughs> That's not the same. <laughs> but it is disappointing. <laughs> well, so. no, wait. There's there's another shark movie coming out soon called The Meg. <laughs> the Ghost Shark. Is also the Mega <laughs> Shark. And, and the movie's title is called The Meg. Oh, okay. <laughs> All is right. Tara Reid also getting work through these movies as well? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Sign they should make in these days. Um, okay, so what other highlights are worth talking about? Uh, <laughs> the girls' character designs are hot. That's about it. <laughs> I'm not quite so sure. I mean, like, the figures are, but mm-hmm. the faces, like, the eyes, like, half the girls have... Like pupils the size of small saucers. Oh, yeah. Well, you're watching an anime. Yeah, what but do you, so, what do you expect? He's not wrong. It's but even a... for an anime, I think this was. I mean, like it's okay for a '90s anime, but for an anime in general, I think they've improved quite a bit over the years with the eyes not being quite literally thirty percent of the head. Well, there you go. So, Matt, where can we find this? lovely piece of animation or <laughs> what's our best bet uh i'm assuming you can guide it uh, on amazon or something I like know this that is the right stuff order that you got i've had any this is not yeah i, I got my copy from uh, the right stuff on i think it was on clearance um <laughs> wonder why <laughs> uh, well, oh, it's really it was because it was short right, um, i'm seeing burn up dvd for t- 987 on, 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 amazon. on amazon yeah this is in fact the dvd yeah yeah this is like the original burn up yeah, nine eighty seven on and Amazon. Right. Plus, you can also get it from Right Stuff. Now, seeing that's only fifty minutes long, that kind of seems a bit like a rip off. That mm. price, personally, what, but it has fan bucks? service. Yeah, and I would play like, in it. I would expect like five dollars. If you can find this on sale for five dollars, then maybe so that way it'll be like a well, dollar for every ten minutes of it. But otherwise, uh, sh- the shipping is going to cost a third of that, <laughs> or just buy a bunch of other things that cost more to get free shipping. Mm-hmm. Like this is like one of the things that you might look for if you just need to hit that point where you get free shipping, <laughs> or you're just tired at an con. You're like, I'll walk in here. What are they showing? Burn up. Oh, sit down. Yeah. Pay attention. And regret so, everything. T- just take a nap while it's playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Video room eight or whatever. Well, I mean, playing the, burn up. The question: Did we get ourselves at PM. ten dollars worth of entertainment out of this? I, I, sure, I would say why not? Yeah, ten, ten of Matt's dollars. <laughs> Bye. Hey, listen. There's a dub with this so you know you get what you paid for <laughs> hey you got it subtitled and dubbed right. oh there was one highlight instead of it mm-hmm. uh you know bryce oh, right. kept commenting on this is that on the dvd instead of it saying start it said burn up yeah, yeah. just hit the burn up menu option uh-huh. no idea I, I i guess i would assume that's the play but it's a very weird thing yeah. i'm glad they didn't keep that going whatever <laughs> i mean it's who knows play. when the actual yeah. dvd was actually made uh, hit the one piece button to start the dvd <laughs> but well no this uh, this was licensed rescued by uh, sentai filmworks and re-released oh really um, oh, they so, end up on a high dive i wonder well yeah. i mean sentai filmworks is actually um run by some of the same people that, formerly a division that, yeah. that, that was formerly a division yeah so not too surprising that it got picked up by them again yeah 
burn up. Maki, Remy, and Yuka may not look like ace crime fighters, which is why they're stuck on traffic patrol. But that all changes when Yuka gets herself kidnapped. Then Maki and Remy must don skin tight battle armor and teach the kidnapper that when you play with fire, you're going to get burned. Man. Oof, that's, yeah, that's a, the thing that, that's a thrilling hook. Now right that you there. say that, yeah, well, I was thinking of what we're watching the end credits. Is I couldn't think of a title for this. And then during the end credits, like they were able to get the rights to a song that had Burn Up in it. Actually. Yeah. And so they decide to just make that the title of it. That's your suspicion. Yeah. That's my suspicion. Yeah. But okay. it probably fits. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, okay, well, I think it's probably time for us to end this. Okay, so mess. if someone has a better link, you can go and make a better link now. But I'm just doing an AMA News Network link because I don't really have a streaming link or anything that I know for it. No. So burn up, exclamation point. You can find it on DVD, that place is. But otherwise, just for general information, here's an AMA News Network link of OGLink.com slash 1VKC. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, so I guess it's it's time for me to end this thing because we're at the end of the show. So uh, for all the things we mentioned here, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. There's other things going on over there. Um, so what are we going to talk about next week? Um, I don't know. Maybe some people in the room know. I, I don't know. You don't know. You'll find out on Wednesday. That's That's the big reveal right there uh so for feedback that no one sends any email to but you can uh talk about generation at gmail.com or attack generation one word via skype if you choose to go down that route also i think that works for google voicemail not that that seems to mean anything to anybody um okay so oh we also have a discord server set up just check twitter you can see the invites if you want to get in there um, there's a, it's a small group. Jefferson finally made it in. So, uh, yeah. So, so me, Bryce. It's like, that's a good thing? Um, uh, but I, uh, that, but um, <laughs> Jingen, uh, and, um, and Penstrike were in there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So go. if you're jonesing for your Jefferson fix, you can get it on the Discord server since yes. you can't get it from the podcast anymore, apparently. Yeah. All right. So. What is... Uh, well, first thing, what's the appendage? With something burning in their pants. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this week's fortune cookie to guide you through the upcoming week is... A schedule defends from chaos and whim. With something burning in their pants. You should probably go see a doctor. There you go. <laughs> okay, everyone have a good week. Ruminate on that one until next time. See ya. Uh, bye bye I think it means chlamydia. <laughs>